This time last year, the 2022 NFL Draft talk was really starting to heat up. I vividly remember there were three running backs that everyone was talking about that could go high in the 2022 draft. The first one was Isaiah Spiller from Texas A&M, the second was Zonovan Knight from NC State, and the third was the subject of today's video. I'm not going to spoil his name just yet, but coming out of high school, he was seen as a baseball prodigy, a five-star recruit, an incredible athlete, and he was a freshman All-American. It seemed like the sky was literally the limit for him, and there was not a chance in the world that he was not going to get drafted into the NFL. That is exactly what would happen though, and in today's video, I'm going to introduce you to who this guy is, we're going to go through his entire story, and eventually talk about what went wrong, and what I think will happen with him in the future. So you're probably wondering who the subject of today's video is, and it is none other than former Ole Miss running back, Jerion Ely. What's wild is Snoop Connor, another Ole Miss running back, was actually drafted this year, and if you would have told me this time last year that it would be him and not Ely, I would have said you're crazy. So in order to understand what went wrong for Jerion Ely, we first need to go back in time. Jerion Ely was born and raised in the southern part of the United States, as he grew up and obviously loved the game of football. He played all sorts of sports, which included football, baseball, and basketball. He was an athletic freak from a very young age, and people and coaches in the area knew this kid was going to be special. When he eventually got to high school, he started to model his game after one particular NFL superstar, Saquon Barkley. He would eventually blow up on both the football field and the baseball diamond as he would attend Jackson Prep High School, which was located in the state of Mississippi. He blew up as a football prospect. He decided to commit pretty early, as in 2017, he decided to stay home and play at Ole Miss, which was an SEC school and a brand that was really looking to rebuild. This would last for a while, as he was committed for nearly two years, but in early January of 2019, he would decommit from the Rebels. The dude was a stud on the football field, though. As a senior, he ran for 1,526 yards, 24 touchdowns, and averaged 8.9 yards per carry. He also led the team in receiving yards and caught three touchdowns. He was a dynamic weapon, and he was not just good at football, he was extremely good at baseball. He also just wasn't one of those players that put up stats, as he led his high school to four straight state titles and was now a five-star recruit. Baseball was obviously still a talent for him, and he could never fully focus on one sport, and some thought his future would be on the diamond. Ely became the fourth player to become an Under Armour All-American in both baseball and football, and at this time, his baseball career was really taking off, and he'd have to make a decision. He was projected as high as a first-round pick in the MLB draft, but as we get into January of 2019, he said he was not going to decide for a while. Scouts were super intrigued by him, one saying, quote, the fact that he has split time and is not dedicating 100% of his time to baseball, we feel there's a lot of upside here, and coupled with that athleticism, he could go very early in the draft because there are such few kids like that throughout the country. Going back to football, in that Army All-American game, he ran the ball for 119 yards and two touchdowns, which is apparently a record in the game, and averaged nearly eight yards per carry against some of the top prospects in all of high school football. It would come down to three schools for his recruitment, Ole Miss, Mississippi State, and Clemson. He ended up signing with the Rebels at the end of the day, and this was a huge get for Matt Luke, but why did he choose Ole Miss? He said, quote, it was just the family atmosphere. There are great people there, and that's one of the main things for me. Eventually, the decision to play football became very clear as his baseball stock began to decline. They said it was because the scouts didn't feel like baseball was big to his heart and that he was more of a natural football player than a baseball player. Either way, he would have gotten drafted high, but he decided he was going to play football. Apparently though, people still asked him all the time which sport he liked better, and he got super tired of it, so his response would be, quote, If God would have blessed me with seven more inches, we wouldn't be having this conversation. I'd probably be committed to Duke to play basketball. And he joined a loaded Ole Miss class. According to 24-7 Sports, Ely was a five-star recruit, the number three running back, and the 29th best player in the class in 2019. So, how would he do? Ely would join another baseball prodigy in the 2019 class as their quarterback signee, John Rice Plumley, also was a star on the diamond and would also make an impact in 2019. Ely would play in his first two games of the 2019 campaign, but he made freshman history in their week three win over southeastern Louisiana. He set an Ole Miss freshman single game record with 273 all-purpose yards, and Matt Luke was extremely proud of him. The difference in that game was a big run and kickoff return for a touchdown. Flash forward a couple of weeks, he'd run for nearly 70 yards against Alabama, He'd have 100 yards and a touchdown against Vanderbilt, and then he had 80 yards and a touchdown against Texas A&M. He was doing this on pretty limited carries as well, and right at the end of the year, he really started to find his stride. In particular, against number one LSU, he ran the ball 13 times for 141 yards, and while the Rebels obviously lost this game, Ely was a young star in the making. Sadly, they would lose to their arch rival in the Egg Bowl, but Ely would go out on top as he finished with 82 yards and a score in that game. 
After finishing with 722 yards, 6 touchdowns, and 6.9 yards per carry, Ely was named a freshman All-American, and obviously he was also an All-SEC freshman. The sky was seemingly the limit for him, and going into 2020, his role was only going to increase. So how did he do? Well, he would start out very strong. He had nearly 100 yards and a touchdown against Florida, had 120 yards and two touchdowns in a near upset win over Alabama, and then had 112 yards and a touchdown against Arkansas. He'd score a touchdown in eight of his 10 regular season games. His best game of the year came against South Carolina as he ran for 84 yards and two touchdowns, and led by their newfound star quarterback, Matt Corral, the Rebels managed to make a bowl game. They'd be matched up against Indiana and they'd win, but Ely would not play. Year two was even better. He finished with 745 yards rushing and a career high nine touchdowns. That's why going into 2021, he was expected to be one of the top running backs in the nation and was a projected first round pick. His 2021 season would not go according to plan. He'd have to share the backfield with Snoop Connor, and while we obviously didn't have a bad year, he was pretty inconsistent. In his first five games, he only rushed for over 50 yards once and only had one touchdown to his name. He would have nearly 100 yards and a score against LSU, but outside of really two or three games, Ely was not that effective. He would go for 115 yards and two touchdowns and a win over Liberty, and had a career high 152 yards against Texas A&M, but he just wasn't making the kind of impact that many thought. Ole Miss had a breakout season as they won 10 regular season games for the first time in school history. They got to the Sugar Bowl, where they lost to Baylor after Matt Corral went down with an early injury, and Ely would finish his junior year with 768 yards and five touchdowns. This was pretty disappointing, and honestly, he should have came back for one more year. That's not what he would do though, as he would declare for the 2022 NFL Draft. He would have a heartfelt message on social media, and now he was headed into the next phase of his football career. Thankfully, he was invited to the NFL Combine, where he did test pretty well, but now he'd have to wait and see if his name would be called. With pick number 154 in the fifth round, an Ole Miss running back was drafted. It was not Ely though, it was Snoop Connor. This was obviously awesome for Ely, but as time went on, his odds of getting drafted became lower and lower. Eventually, it would not end up happening at all, as he would go undrafted and would later have to sign an undrafted free agent deal. Thankfully, he may have found a great landing spot. He's picked up by the Kansas City Chiefs, and he'll have an opportunity to play and even make the roster. The Chiefs drafted Rutgers running back Isaac Pacheco in the seventh round, and those two will likely battle it out for that final roster spot. They already have Ronald Jones and Clyde Edwards-Alaire, and many people are cautiously optimistic that Ely could be one of those good undrafted free agents. One Ole Miss sports writer had this to say, Ely's tools could make him effective in short yardage situations and special teams. He's 5'8 and 195 pounds, and he is lightning quick with his decision making and has high end acceleration when in the open field. So yeah, he might get a chance to make the roster, but why did he go undrafted? Well, I have it for three reasons. The first one is he's undersized. Ely does not have the ideal height for an NFL running back, and when you're undersized, you really have to be good and you really have to prove that you're worth getting drafted. That leads into the second point, that running backs are no longer prioritized. It's so easy to find a decent running back anywhere in the draft or even in the undrafted pool, so teams aren't really too worried about finding a back, and that's why less of them get drafted. Finally, I think the big reason why he wasn't drafted was because his production was stagnant. He finished with nearly 2,500 yards and 25 touchdowns in his career, and had most of that come in his last two years, maybe he would have gotten drafted, but the fact that he started out as a freshman All-American and never really got better, I think is what concerned people. People saw that he pretty much stayed the same player all three years, and even as a junior, he was beat up by another player. That's honestly why I think he was undrafted, because he just didn't get any better. Was he a good running back? Yes. But did he ever take it to the next level? No. And I definitely think he will try to make it in the NFL, but there's also a chance he can return to baseball, as he was drafted in the 31st round by the Diamondbacks, and maybe he'll work his way up those farm leagues. I'm not quite sure though, but I did love watching Ely at Ole Miss. I remember him in high school, and I really do hope he makes the roster. What do you guys think though? If you're an Ole Miss fan, what went wrong for Jerry on Ely? Who's another undrafted player? Who's another player whose stock fell or went undrafted that I could take a look at in my next video? And what topic should I do next? Be sure to let me know down below, smash that like button for the algorithm, and check out all my other videos on the end screen. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.